who was one of the early martyrs of the church. He's one of the early apologists of the church. He died around the year 100 AD. So during his childhood, he knew St. John the Apostle and the apostles that were still alive. And he was, he was in Rome, and he was one of the early martyrs of the church. And when they made a mockery of the church, they said the Catholic Church, Romans said the Catholic Church creates bad citizens. And the Catholic Church are extremists. The Christians, the followers of Jesus Christ, are extremists. And they're also cannibals. They eat human flesh. And they say they eat the flesh of their own God, and they are insane. The St. Justin Martyr is one of the very first apologists, while St. John the Apostle was still alive, who pointed out, uh, talked about our holy sacrifice of the Mass. And he told the Romans, he said, yes, we do eat the body, and we do drink the blood of our Lord and our God, who was crucified by you Romans only a few years ago. But this body and blood is under the appearance of bread, under the appearance of wine. And he miraculously enters into the bread and into the wine, and that is not bread and not wine, but the true body and the true blood of Jesus Christ, whom you crucified. And we do eat his real body, and we do drink his real blood. And he is one of the early apologists who pointed out to the, to the Romans, he says, we are not only not bad citizens, we are the best citizens of your nation. Our soldiers are your best soldiers. Our citizens are your best citizens. We are instructed by our God to follow the true, the king of Rome, the emperor of Rome. But we follow God first. And he spoke so well about defending our faith that many Romans believed what he had to say, and some converted to the Catholic faith. But notice what we call St. Justin. He is never simply called St. Justin. He's always called St. Justin Martyr. There are other Justins that were saints, and I think others that were also martyrs. But he is St. Justin Martyr. Because he explained our holy faith to men that were pagans, he showed how wonderful our faith is. He also showed how it is not a wicked form of cannibalism, but that we do truly eat the body and blood and soul and divinity of Jesus Christ in the Holy Host, and that we are good citizens and that Rome needs us. Rome needs us. Just like today we are to tell Joe Biden, who doesn't know anything about the Catholic faith and who should be refused Holy Communion, should be excommunicated, and if he didn't repent in old days, burned at the stake. But he should be excommunicated, he should be received, refused Holy Communion, because he is a very wicked uh, Catholic who has left our faith, who does not believe in the teachings of our faith. And he is using his power as president, or rather as chief tyrant in the United States of the communist, new communist country which we have become, to, to destroy Christianity and to say that it is, it is evil to be Christian, it is evil to be a follower of Christ, and that we are bad citizens. That's what they say. The St. Justin Martyr stood up against the wicked Joe Bidens of that time, 2,000 years ago, and he explained very clearly how we are the true citizens, and that we are the answer to every problem of Rome. Rome is becoming corrupt, the Rome of pagan, pagan Rome, and Rome was collapsing. So likewise, the United States is very corrupt, and the United States is, the sun is setting on the glory of the United States. It is setting on our country, it is setting on our culture, and we are a dying people. And the only answer to this death is... Jesus Christ, and the only answer to this death are good citizens who will be the Catholic citizens of our nation. And the only answer to the problems of our nation is to bring the body and the blood and the soul and divinity of Jesus Christ to the totality of our country. This is what is needed. And so, the, the, but, the, but, but the modern pagan Rome, which is the United States of America, and the modern pagan Rome, 
which are the modern countries throughout the world, they are trying to destroy all Christianity, but they will not succeed. Christianity, our Holy Roman Catholic faith, has survived every single nation, and every single culture, every single people that has tried to destroy it. And St. Justin Martyr stood up and he spoke very beautifully about our faith. And he spoke very clearly. And you can see Justin Martyr, who wrote almost 2,000 years ago, 1,900 years ago, he wrote these words. That the same words that he wrote 1,900 years ago, we still believe today. And during these 1,900 years, many civilizations have come, and many civilizations have gone. Many different peoples and tried to destroy our holy faith, and they have never succeeded, including peoples in our own church. There have been wicked bishops and priests, like Martin Luther, who was a Catholic priest, and Arius, a Catholic priest, and wicked bishops, and, and, and like all the bishops of England that went along with Henry VIII, and many, many wicked, uh, wicked faithful, like Henry VIII himself, who was a Catholic faithful, who was a Catholic king, who was called the defender of the faith when he was a young man. And yet Henry VIII turned against God, and he formed the Anglican religion. We were later on the Episcopalians and the various breakoffs of the Anglican religion that came from him. John Calvin, a Catholic priest. Melanchthon, a Catholic priest. And Swingley, a Catholic priest. All these men turned against God and formed false religions in order to destroy our religion. And they brought many souls away from God. But in every age, God has raised up Catholic apologists like St. Justin, who stood up against these lies and said, You cannot fall for the lies of the heretics of the first century, who denied the divinity of Jesus Christ, some of them. They denied his humanity, others. And they denied many truths about God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And St. Justin Martyr stood firm against them. And there have been descendants of St. Justin in every single age of our church. In our times, it was Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre, who died in 1991, who marched the 25th, the day of the Annunciation, he died on March 25th, 1991. He was the form founder of our Society of St. Pius X, which I am a priest of. And he defended the Holy Roman Catholic Church and the Holy Roman Catholic faith against the modernism that infiltrated this church. And he saved the Latin Tridentine Mass. He saved the Catholic priesthood. And he spoke clearly against the errors and heresies of our times. And he was persecuted for it just like St. Justin Martyr was 2,000 years ago. And each of the apologists of the church down the last 2,000 years have stood for exactly the same teaching that was handed down to the 12 apostles by our Lord Jesus Christ in his 33 years upon this earth, in the three years of his public ministry. And this is going to continue till the end of time. Our Lady of Fatima appeared 100 years ago in Fatima, Portugal, in 1917. And she said that Rome will lose the faith, which is what Our Lady said in the 1840s in La Salette, France. And there will be a great crisis in our Holy Church, and Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. That's what Our Lady said in the 1840s. But it doesn't mean the Antichrist will be uh, directly of Rome. But the seat of the Antichrist means power. Seat signifies power. In other words, decisions will be made in Rome through the authority and the power of Rome to lead souls to the Antichrist and to lead souls away from God. And this is going to happen in our Holy Church. It happened in the Old Testament. Remember that Caiaphas was the head of the true church, just like Francis is the head of the true church today. And Caiaphas used his full power to bring about the crucifixion of Christ, and yet he remained the head of our Holy Church until St. Peter took his place in the New Testament. So likewise, Francis today uses his power to mock Christ, uses his power to disobey heaven. About eight years ago, 
Putin spoke with, with, with Pope Francis, and he asked him, Francis, can you please obey the Blessed Virgin Mary? Communist Putin asked Francis the Pope, can you please obey the Blessed Virgin Mary and consecrate Russia, my country, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary as she requested? And Francis said, we do not speak of Fatima. So the Pope was against Fatima, and the Communists wanted Fatima. We are in an upside-down world. And yet, in the end, the heavenly request will be fulfilled. Just like Caiaphas disobeyed heaven, and yet, he was still the representative of God, which is why St. John the Evangelist tells us that Caiaphas, with a wicked heart, Caiaphas, desiring only the death of Jesus Christ, stood up and spoke divine words. The wicked Caiaphas stood up and said, Do you not know that one man must die for the people, lest we all perish? And that man is Jesus, whom they call the Christ. The evangelist tells us, he said these words because he was the high priest that year. The Holy Ghost moved over the wicked heart of Caiaphas. The Holy Ghost overcame the most malicious spirit of Caiaphas, and he spoke the truth. And one day the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and if not him, his successor, shall finally obey heaven. Yet, in the meantime, he disobeys God. And so what do we do? We follow the teaching and the practice of our ancestors all the way until martyrdom. St. Justin Martyr stood for the holy truth of the faith that has never changed and that remains until our very day and shall remain until the very ending of the world. But now the holy faith is persecuted, not only by the outside world, but also by Catholics. And so we must stand firm for our holy faith, follow the example of St. Justin Martyr, and in due time there shall be a conversion of Rome. Because the Blessed Virgin Mary said both things. She said Rome will lose the faith. She said Rome will become the seat of the Antichrist. She said there will be, in 1917, there will be a wicked council that will be destructive to our Holy Church. Be, that was called Vatican Council II. That the priests will turn against God. She said all those negative things. But then she said, In the end, my immaculate heart shall triumph. And there shall be a rising up of priests. Priests are so wicked. And yet there shall be a rising up of priests who shall turn away from wickedness, who shall come back to God, and who shall be apostles of Jesus and Mary. And we need these apostles of Jesus and Mary in our times. There shall come a time when, when the Pope shall obey heaven, even though he's not doing it right now. And so the time will come. Yes, Our Lady did say there will be terrible times. There will be wicked priests, wicked Pope, wicked bishops, and wicked faithful, throughout the entire world, which happened before in our history of our church, happened in the Old Testament many times, and yet, in the end, the wickedness shall be wiped out. The wicked shall not prevail. There shall be a great conversion to God. There shall be a great returning to God, and a great return to the glory of the church. She really did that in Fatima 100 years ago. She really did that in La Salette 150 years ago. She predicted it at Quito, Ecuador, 400 years ago in, in South America. Our Lord Jesus Christ predicted it 2,000 years ago in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And it shall come true in the book of Apocalypse. And it shall always be true what every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. So let's persevere in our faith, be ready to suffer a little something for our Lord Jesus Christ, and be patient, because the victory of Christ comes soon, and sooner than we think. Close that God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.